lot of the uh, uh, original uh, atmospheric modeling uh, comes from Dr. Walter L. Sasser's work from 1942 on the infrared heat balance of the Earth. And it's brilliant work commissioned by the U.S. Weather Service, but it was commissioned uh, uh, for day-to-day -day heat up and cool down. And there are simplifications in it. It allows you to take the temperature, pressure, and humidity from the radio sound balloons and convert them into the infrared out, the infrared from the atmosphere down, that's the reflected stuff, that would be the CO2 reflected, and then take the input solar and find out how fast is the atmosphere going to heat up and cool down. Well, there's two tremendous simplifications in Dr. L. Sasser's work, actually three. One of them is that the model is of a atmosphere 100,000 feet thick that goes off as an infinite flat plane. The Earth curves. So there's infrared emission that goes out because of the curvature. So the amount of infrared loss in L. Sasser's model is less than reality. It doesn't really matter for local heating and cooling, but it does matter for the whole globe being analyzed. Sure. Number two, uh, there are two effects, one called the Lorentz broadening on the uh, absorption spectrum for the uh, CO2 and other constituents, and the other one called Doppler broadening. Lorentz broadening happens towards the surface of the Earth, and Lorentz broadening happens as you get out and get more sparse. And so the end result from that is that you have to, to precisely model things, account for that layer by layer. Al Sasser uses a normalized spectrum that's an approximate, approximate for the atmospheric spectrum, and he uses no uh, variation between the Lorentz and the Doppler. He uses an approximation, and it works well for day to day. But if you're going to analyze the atmosphere precisely, you have to include those, and that's what Dr. Michalski has done. And when he does that, and does analysis work using the radio sound measurements that go back over 80 years, what he finds is no net shift in the infrared radiation balance of the Earth, despite the change in CO2, particularly since, he, since World War II. But the problem is that most of the, oh, hoity-toit atmospheric physicists, they're actually doing stuff that harks back to original work they don't do this, and what they've done, instead of looking at Dr. Milkowski's work seriously, is they discount him saying that he doesn't understand radiation heat transfer. They're absolute idiots, because Dr. Milkowski uh, came from a nuclear power background, and he's done neutron uh, point kernel work for neutron energies for nuclear reactions from everything from nuclear weapons to nuclear reactors. And the reason he did that was because he was part of the Soviet bloc system, originally part of their whole nuclear program. He ran out of a job in 1990, went and interviewed with the Hungarian Meteorological Bureau. They wanted somebody that was an expert on radiation physics. <laughs> he became one overnight. Uh, he's, as he says to me with his good accent, he says, Mark, it is so simple compared to nuclear stuff, point kernel stuff. I said, I know, because I spent 20 years in nuclear power have three graduate courses under my belt on nuclear technology, so I'm well aware of the difficulties of the mathematics.